Well, gas prices are continuing to trend lower. The national average here falling below $4 for the first time since March. We're talking about the lowest level we have seen since that month. Now, the question is, what does this all mean for renewables? Well, drivers are still switching over to EVs in the face of historically high energy costs. Take a look at this new research from Kenlis. It shows a 63% bump in EV sales globally in the first half of the year. EV sales in China accounted for more than half the uptick, while the U.S. made up just 6% of that share. I want to bring in our auto reporter, Pras Subramanian, who, of course, is on top of all things EVs for us. Pras, what's interesting about this study is it's not just about where those sales are coming from. It's who's actually selling these cars, and it's not Tesla, right, at the very top. Especially in China, where they can sell much cheaper, smaller EVs that you can't actually sell here. We're talking about cars that might cost $5,000, right? Very low range, but very economical cars. So China really dominating, like you mentioned there. 26% of all cars in China, uh, solar EVs or plug-in hybrids. Uh, Europe's at 16%. The U.S. lagging behind at 6%, but still kind of above that 5% tipping point that we like to see in terms of like adoption. You know, the big question is we had, like you mentioned, the gas prices, right? As they were peaking, as they were jumping, EV interest was also climbing. The question is now, as gas prices fall down, demand kind of decreases, are we going to see that EV demand stick around? Mm -hmm. Or is it going to actually kind of come back down to? I think we're sort of at a point where people actually do want to transition or beyond the price of gas. So I have a feeling that in the U.S. at least that will continue that trend of EV purchasing. Yeah, we've heard a lot of people asking whether we're at an inflection point. By the way, BYD, 15% of the market share, Tesla 14. But what's interesting is 47% is others. So we're talking about many other brands, to your point, especially in China. A big brand here, of course, Rivian reporting today. Um, what do we see in the numbers there? And did we get a little more color on the kind of bump they're likely to expect from the Inflation Reduction Act? So with regards to earnings, the big thing is going to be that production forecast. Can they maintain that 25,000 vehicle unit uh, per year for 2022 that they had mentioned before? Uh, as of right now, they made around 4,400 trucks last quarter, 2,500 in Q1. So they got to make 19,000 trucks-ish in the back half of this year. That's a tall order for them. We'll see if they can actually say that, hey, you know, we can actually do that. We have a good chance of doing that. Our factory's coming online faster than we thought it would. Maybe we can do that. So that's a big question for investors. You know, from a top line point of view, they're looking at $335 million in, 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 re in revenue on a, on a loss of $1.61. So that's like the, the kind of the headline numbers, but it's going to be all about that forecast and about the IRA. You know, um, I have done some reporting here on uh, what Rivian is doing. They're actually right now sending people um, <laughs> these actual binding purchase orders. Mm. If you put 100 bucks, You can lock in the $7,500. Yes, and the consideration is $100 of your, of your, of your um, deposit is non-refundable. That's part, that's that consideration for you actually signing a binding uh, contract. And they're saying that hopefully this will allow you to preserve that tax credit because most of these trucks are around $90,000 when they're, when they're optioned up. So that's already way beyond the IRA's limit of 80,000 for trucks and SUVs. So we'll see how that works out. They have the supply? Well, I mean, as of right now, they have 90,000 pre-orders and they're making what? 4,000 a quarter. You do the math, right? It's going to be like 10 years. I mean, <laughs> it's going to be a long time. Okay. We'll be looking out for your story, Pras Subramanian. Thanks so much for that.